Welcome to Mao Yao. Mao Yao is a Chinese name for what is known as Mon Mian worldwide. It is a small group of languages in the Southeast Asia. The languages are typical for Southeast Asia in their tones and isolated morphology. So the whole region developments can be exemplified using them as a good instance. The course is based mainly on the works of Martha Redcliffe. A typical Southeast Asian syllable is built with the following theme. C means any consonant and W means any vowel. So we have an onset that constitutes of an initial consonant or two consonants. The letter in brackets is optional then go optional medial consonants of the restricted set the second part of the syllable is its rhyme the syllable ending is called a uh, final it consists of a vowel core or nuclei that can be a monophthong or a diphthong and an optional final coda. It's rare. So we can illustrate this taking reconstructed Monmian syllables. For example, when we have this npo, np is initial and o is its core, its nuclei. Then when we have m, m is initial, w is a rhyme part, and a is a diphthong, is a nuclei. When we have meow, <coughs> then M is initial, U is part of rhyme, and O is a nuclei. Then when we have Neanh, in this case, this capital X letter means some velar, some uvular sound, then N is initial, U is a part of a rhyme, then goes syllable final part, a nuclei, and finally we have some coda. Well, I told you earlier that coda can have just one consonant. It's true for modern varieties, but when we have a reconstructed one, then it can have more consonants in its end and its beginning. Then we have a simple tau, and you guessed right, two 
is its initial consonant, how is its core. And we have a final monster, Schuerch, I guess. So, is initial, then we have U, medial. Well, what is the difference between letters for consonants like this U and letters for vowel uh, with a sign below it like that U? The difference is that the first one belongs to consonant or exists by itself and the second one neighbors a vowel so it can be used as a part of a vowel as a single entity really. So we have uwech as a syllable rhyme, eich as a syllable final, I itself as a nuclei, and finally some unclassified, well, classified, but unspecified sound as its coda. Monmian languages have many things in common. For instance, initial obstruents lost their voice contrast and develop aspiration one, so there is no T versus D, but T versus T. There is voice contrast uh, sustained in nasals and liquids. Affricates and palatal consonants are common. The languages are tonal and contrasts they have are of pitch level, contour and phonation. Tones are compact and rarely spread neighboring syllables. So basically, tone is a property of a single syllable. And as you see, syllables are basically words. In mon, however, initial stops can be prenasalized. So when you have p, prenasalized version will be mp. Few varieties preserve voiced obstruents. Retroflex consonants are common, and few varieties have voice velars and uvulars. All these names are specific names for classes of consonants that have something in common in their realizations and so on. And you can, it's just a convenient way to group them. Vowels in Mon have no length contrast, so there are no short and long vowels. All vowels are basically the same. Syllable coda is very simple, it can have just two possible phonemes. There are more relics of Sonsanhi when tones of neighboring syllables are joined, and these joints can be from left to right and from right to left. There is a larger number of possible onsets. Mian, in contrary, have no more penalized stops. They all became voiced obstruents. Vowels have length contrast, so there are short and long vowels. Syllable coda can be more interesting. It has more possible phonemes. Tone Sanhi operates only from right to left. There is a larger number of possible rhymes and there are traces of an N voicing element. With the exception of the last property, Mian languages better sustain the syllable and from the original Mon Mian state, and Mon languages better sustain the syllable first part. So we can uh, basically take a first part of a Mon word and join it to the last part of the Mian word. 
Well, when was the original language, the common language spoken? During the long history of Monian people, we can say at least about 2050 years, they inhabited areas that were rich in agricultural resources, interacting with people of really different cultures. The common language age is speculative. Old Chinese, for instance, was spoken between 1250 BC and 221 AD. And the oldest Chinese words in Monmian were imported from the Chinese approximately in 500 BC, so it's old Chinese period. However, some old Chinese words were already imported by Mon and Mian separately. So when we have these two old Chinese words, iron and a verb to descend, Mon and Mian both imported them from Chinese, but independently. So Mon and Mian forms are different. So probably two branches were already independent in, back in that old time. The homeland of Mon Mian is probably not far away from the current home, somewhere on the Yanzi River. And it was approved by genetics, archaeology, and names of plants and animals in the common language. Historical sources about them are very poor. Some people propose they could be the subject of Chu state, what was ruled by Chinese elite. However, Chu texts show no really Hmong influences, but rather Taika Dai ones. And because Monmian languages have many similarities with neighboring Sino Tibetan, Taikadai, Austroasiatic, and Austronesian languages, this led to many proposals of the different nature of such resemblances. So there are five main theories. You can see them. And The most in interesting for me is the last one, the East Asian superfamily that basically unites all mentioned families by Starosta, but it really is highly controversial. And all these theories are highly provisional and don't present convincing arguments. So where do Mao Yao or Mon Mian people live? They are native to mountainous regions of southern China, but they are spread it now. Uh, migration from China to Vietnam, Laos, and Thailand is a recent event. It started in the 18th century and was special large scale in the 19th. So now they live in Southeast Asia as well. Thank you for the attention and see you.